sleepless nights and I, I count every tear you cry. Call my name, I'll come running. Hello, and welcome to Online Worship with White Bear Lake United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Bill Eaves, and along with Pastor John McBride, I thank you for joining us. If you're watching on Facebook, please take a moment to click share so that your friends can be a part of this service as well. Today in worship, we continue our series called The Gospel in Children's Stories. Stories give us a wonderful opportunity to talk to our children about the values that deserve to be at the center of their lives. And they also give grown-ups a chance to listen like children and to hear our faith in a new way. It's the mission of this church to provide nourishment for the hungers of life. We believe that God is with us today, nourishing our hungers and showing us how to bring compassion and hope to the world around us. Now, let's be in worship together. Please join me in taking a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. God of our yesterdays and our tomorrows, God of eternal love, with you there are no endings without new beginnings. Our life in you is a journey, a path that beckons us onward, a way that offers us hope and strength and joy. Your spirit accompanies us and enlivens us. You walk with us to feel the pains of a world in need, of places that struggle with the stress of violence and unrest, the places where a meal and a cup of clean water 
are a hard-to-find luxury. The places where fear dominates and dialogue is impossible. Journey with us to understand what this means for us as your followers. God of the journey in these summer days, we recognize that there is so much to love in this world, so much to marvel at and to give thanks for. We recognize that the wayside offers us places to rest and be renewed, but that the journey leads on into more new discovery, greater work, more tasks, undiscovered places to learn, and the journey has only begun. Walk with us today, O oh God, as we continue along this journey. Along the way, give us the wisdom to embrace the lessons we learn, to pace ourselves on this road, to shake the dust off our feet in forgiveness for those places where we experience deceit or hostility, to turn our eyes ahead in gratefulness when the way ahead is clear, and to move on with trust when the way is uncertain. Bless our lives that we may go with the eyes of a child, open to the wonder we encounter around us and to the surprises that may come to us in unexpected places. We ask these things in the name of Christ, who came as a child out of love and goodness and who taught those who would follow his way to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the story of the hare and the tortoise. One day the hare and the tortoise were together. The hare was making fun of the tortoise because he moved so slowly. The hare said in a not kind way, how do you ever get any place? The tortoise said he could get places a lot quicker than the hare thought he could. The hare thought, we should have a race. The tortoise thought that was so silly, a tortoise racing a hare, that he agreed to do it. The race was set. Fox agreed to be the judge. The race started. Hare had a big lead. When Tortoise looked down the road, he couldn't even see the hare. He had such a big lead. Hare was going so fast, but he got very tired. He decided he would take a nap at the side of the road. All the while, the Tortoise was moving slowly but steadily towards the path on the, on the race. As the tortoise kept moving, he noticed he came upon the hare and he noticed he was sleeping beside the, the road. But the tortoise didn't stop. He kept going slowly and steadily towards the finish line. All of a sudden, the hare woke up. He realized he needed to run as fast as he could and so he started to run and run and run. But just as the tortoise was going across the finish line, the fox declared the tortoise the winner of the race. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Then, Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge, who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow, 
who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? On Copley Square in the city of Boston, there's a bronze sculpture that honors the runners in the Boston Marathon. Every year in April, the runners line up to make their way through the city to the finish line at the Boston Public Library, with the fastest runners coming in in just under two and a half hours. The statue that honors them might seem an unlikely one. It's two statues, really, and they depict the hare and the tortoise. The sculptor, Nancy Schoen, said she wanted to create a meaningful metaphor for the race, and she also wanted one that would be kid-friendly. The sculptor, who is a runner herself and knows how grueling this kind of race can be, said she's always been interested in the variety of people who participate in the marathon, more than 30,000 of them in recent years. She points out that while elite runners sprint across the finish line and get all the attention from the crowds and from the press, there are many who are still running, simply hoping to reach that finish line. Some run for the personal challenge of it, and some for the fun, some run for charity. Some power themselves in wheelchairs, 68 of them last year, and others jog or walk. And there are even some who have to crawl across the finish line hours after the crowds have gone home. There are many ways to win a race besides being the fastest runner. Aesop is the legendary author of the story of the hare and the tortoise. He may have lived as early as the sixth century before the Christian era. Some say he was an advisor to a king, a kind of wise man to the royal court. Others say he was from Ethiopia and lived as a slave on a Greek island before gaining his freedom by solving a riddle. Somehow his name got attached to a collection of over 300 stories that have come to be called fables, short tales typically with talking animals that are meant to teach a lesson. In this story, the tortoise is the unlikely hero who carries the moral teaching that was at the heart of most of Aesop's fables. I'd like us to look at this story today as a lesson in patience and persistence, two virtues that Jesus and the writers of the New Testament also wanted to instill in us. Impatience is a part of the human condition. We want things to happen a lot sooner than they will, and often the idea of waiting is hard for us to deal with. Children and teenagers want to be older, want to be independent before they're ready. Young adults want their lives to take off, to have the opportunities they have always looked forward to. All of us want things to become clearer. We want the path ahead to be unobstructed, or we want to see the results of our hard work today. And as people often say when expressing their impatience these days, we just want things to get back to normal. When I was in second grade, we did a kind of science experiment. Each of us took a seed and planted it in a little paper cup and added a bit of water to it. We wrote our name on our cup and the type of seed that it was. Mine was bicolor Lespedeza, more commonly known as scrubby brush clover. Then we put them on a shelf 
near a brightly lit window in our classroom. We wanted to watch what happened as a seed germinated and began to grow. Within an hour, some of us got up from our desks, ostensibly to sharpen our pencils, but really just to walk over by the window to see if our seed was growing yet. By the end of the day, nothing had happened, of course. The cups looked exactly as they had when we had planted the seeds. And each of us wondered, would mine grow? The next day, we were eager to check our seeds. Still, nothing had happened. But we put a little more water in the cup and wondered, isn't there something I could do to make mine start growing? Maybe I could move it to a different place closer to the window. We waited for what seemed like forever. And eventually, the seeds germinated and my scrubby brush clover peeked its head up through the dirt and grew big enough to take home and replant in a bigger container. Now, the funny thing was that all of us had seen things grow before. We had grass in our yards. Some of us had gardens at home, but we had never paid attention to the process. We had never waited anxiously for something like that to happen, for signs of growth to appear. Patience is largely about paying attention, and not just to this moment, but to the big picture, to what else is happening that we might not be able to see. It's also about acknowledging that some things cannot be rushed by us, no matter what we do, and about being willing to wait until the time is right. Persistence is the active form of patience. It's keeping your head down and continuing to run even when things take longer than you expect. In the 18th chapter of Luke's Gospel, Luke writes that Jesus told the people a parable about the need to pray always and not lose heart. Praying always is about patience, about realizing that there are some things that we don't have control over. Not losing heart is about persistence, about the need to stay engaged, to stay in the race, to hang in there even when life doesn't appear to be going our way. Jesus told parables for the same reason that Aesop told fables and lots of other people tell stories to children, to teach a lesson, but even more, to invite listeners to step outside of their ordinary world and step into a different one where things look different, where things like truth and motives and balances of power are more obvious. And then having seen the world of story, listeners are invited to return to this world with a new understanding, a new grasp on reality. The parable in Luke 18 focuses on a widow dealing with a judge in a corrupt justice system. Luke twice tells us that the judge in this story is someone who neither fears God nor respects people. And Jesus characterizes the judge as unjust. Regardless, the widow repeatedly comes to the judge in pursuit of justice. She keeps on coming, saying to him, grant me justice against the one who has treated me unjustly. Despite her plea, the judge does nothing. He's not willing to act at first. Yet because of her persistence and her calls for justice, he relents. Or as the judge says, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. It literally says, I will give her justice so that she may not give me a black eye by her coming. With the persistence of a boxer in the ring with the judge, this woman wins the day. She demonstrates that she never loses heart. If an unjust judge can be won over with such persistence, then surely God will give us justice. So like the widow, Christians are to persevere, even when the odds seem stacked against us, kind of like a tortoise in a race with a hare. Persistence and patience are so important in life. 
because life is more like a marathon than a sprint. There may be a few big things in life that happen in an instant, like the moment when you say, I do, to someone, or the sudden job offer that comes as a surprise. But the truth is that most of life unfolds slowly, gradually, like discerning your vocation or building a relationship or growing up. Living in a pandemic has shown all of us again that some things just can't be hurried. People joke these days about how a week seems like a month, about how we've been living through this pandemic for three years already, haven't we? This gradual unfolding is slow work. It requires patience and persistence to live into it. And one person who helps me understand this slow work is Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. He was a priest and a scientist in the first half of the 20th century. Trained as a theologian and also as a paleontologist and geologist, he spent years in China studying the fossilized remains of early humans and was particularly interested in evolution and was awestruck by the beauty and diversity of the natural world. He saw all of creation as evolving into increased complexity, and he understood the Holy Spirit to be dynamic, working, moving in the world, even when we can't see or feel it. He called this the slow work of God, and he saw our human task as one of learning to be comfortable with being in process, being unfinished. Here's what he wrote. Above all, trust in the slow work of God. We are quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay. We should like to skip the intermediate stages. We are impatient of being on the way to something unknown, something, un something new. And yet, it is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stages of instability and that it may take a very long time. And so I think it is with you, he said. Your ideas mature gradually. Let them grow. Let them shape themselves without undue haste. Don't try to force them on, as though you could be today what time, that is to say grace and circumstances acting on your own good will, will make of you tomorrow. Only God could say what this new spirit gradually forming within you, will be. Give our Lord the benefit of believing that His hand is leading you, and accept the anxiety of feeling yourself in suspense and incomplete. Living into the slow work of God means living with patience and persistence, much like the tortoise and the hare. It means paying sustained attention to the seeds we plant to see if there is growth, but knowing that while the growth is really out of our control, we don't give up on it, but watch for it, trusting that it will come. It means finding the strength to be like a woman alone, seeking justice before an unjust judge. It means, above all, trusting in the slow work of God. Amen.
Our online greeter today is Mary Ellen Calderwood, and she is the person who's responsible for the beautiful art exhibitions that we have in our hallways at church. We have one happening right now that is not being seen by people <laughs> because there aren't any people in our building. But let's, uh, let's check in with Mary Ellen. Good morning, Mary Ellen. Good morning, Thanks Bill. Thanks for being with us today. Tell us a little bit about art in church. Why do we always have this beautiful art? Without anything on our walls, even at home, it feels so empty, not friendly at all. It just makes a friendlier attitude to have art on our walls. And I belong to many different art groups, so I collect from many artists. And I really enjoy changing my art on my wall at home also. So we do at church. We use art from many members of our church, as well as people who are from the community and not members of the church. But people really enjoy showing their art. Many of the ladies at our quilters have shown their quilts and they love it. They love it. They bring all their friends to show their quilts in a gallery at church. Tell us about the, what we have here now. This is from Joan Hoffman, who is a member. She's been doing watercolor for many years and her enjoyment, her first enjoyment is to do flowers. She's done other things as well in watercolor, but she really has a connection with flowers, and that is what she enjoys doing in her, in her artistic time. So it's, it's a very, art is a very good healing medium for all of us, and we're all artists. We say, oh, I'm not, but really, we all are artists. And to take classes in other types of art, to expand your horizon of art is wonderful because taking classes in, for me, taking classes in watercolor has made my fiber art a lot better. It's really improved in other ways I do art also. Thanks so much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We're making plans to hold our first in-person worship service outdoors on Sunday, August 30th. Watch our website, social media, and eblast for details. And please know that we'll also continue to have online worship each Sunday. And now, I hope you'll go into the coming week knowing that you are a beloved child of God. May God bless your eyes with clear vision May God strengthen your soul with courage. May God fill your heart with love so that you may go forth to do the healing work of love today and every day. Amen. So